So um, here, um, I'm going to show how to um, connect a Jupyter server um, through a web browser. Uh, why are we doing this? Well, here we have one um, tell with me. So why are we doing this? Um, we, we're kind of getting used to uh, use um, a putty to connect to a server and we can run Python. We can um, also save the files. Um, but if you are away from the server uh, to be able to browse the file, you probably have to um, download the file and open from your local um, local um, um, image um, browser. So it's a little bit traffic. Uh, so sometimes you want to run your Python code in sort of interactive way. So if you plot something, you can get it straight away. And you don't want to have a SCP or even a, a Win SCP uh, to copy the files back. You want to see the results straight away. And there is a way. Uh, the way is to use um, uh, JupyterLab and then establish a web browser. But in the meantime, you need to ensure that um, the server is accessible from your own computer. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do both here. So um, the starting point would be um, connected to your um, server through a web browser. So my server is in uh, Goliath. Right, so that's where my server is. So I'm going to go in there. And uh, one thing I have to say is that because this server can only be accessed from um, the internet. So you have to use your VPN to um, establish in the beginning. So here you can see I have my internet and then I have my VPN connected. So basically the computer here, even I phys I'm physically at home, I'm connected to uh, the university and I'm able to access it. So if you don't have the VPN, you wouldn't be able to connect it to uh, this internet server. Um, so now we got the command prompt here and I can make a document, say make directory, trial, right? So that's where my, oh, okay. So I have a trial sometimes before, let's say trial, Jupyter, right? So, and then I SSH into the trial, Jupyter, right? Let's create a file. Let's say touch A, touch B dot pi. So I basically create two files and they are all empty. And again, remember, this is in Goliath. This is not in my computer. Now, in general, if we run this Python file, so let's say we're gonna edit this b.py. So what I'll do is that I go to b.py and I basically write my commands here. So we can just copy something. Let's say we go to online and then Python plot and save file. Save image. And then there are probably are some examples coming up and um, we can copy and paste those files, um, right? So we probably can just copy these, yeah? Copy these. Um, and save it here. So usually if you copy something from online, we use set paste. Yeah. Um, and then I can just paste it in this way. All right. So we probably doesn't need to show it because it's it doesn't have a graphic interface. So I can delete the show. And then um, we also copy the file, the, the answers, how you can save the file. So here we've got save figure four. Okay. And then we can um, Insert here. Yeah. If we run this command, let's say Python, well, hopefully that is able to run through Python 2 because Python here means Python 2. Right. So 
it doesn't allow me to make that display. Uh, okay, so that example didn't work. Um, but let's have a look. Maybe there is some reasons here. Does that mean that PyLab is not available? Let's first source Python. Sure. So basically I have a command and this command allows me to access a local Python uh, library. So the tricky part is that this is a server. I don't have a super user uh, access, but I want to have my own uh, Python uh, repository. So I basically made a very kind of homemade Python repository in my own, um, in my own uh, files. So now I'm under Python 3.6. So it's just a kind of home build Python 3. Uh, given that um, the server doesn't allow me to have a super user to install packages as we, as I, I would like to. So this is my personal um, Python. So I can do, I probably can do Python d.py and see whether it comes up with some result. Hey, there is, hopefully it can run. Okay, so PyLab is not defined. That's probably, okay, so I can do peep install PyLab, right? That's also just a demonstration that I can use pip as I wish. Um, no match, right? So there is no PyLab, unfortunately. Hmm, what else can we do? Well, we probably just get another example. That makes it easier, so. Python um, plot example. Right. We basically just try to grab whatever samples we have um, and then make a, a, a plot. So that's the gallery. And to try a few and see whether there are any file um, plot that we can do. Okay, so that's easy. That's much better than the other one. Okay, so let's go to b.py again. And we're gonna clear everything and insert what we have. Hmm. Um, I need to copy it and paste it in this way. And we need to save that to a file. So that save is being suggested by this copy, insert, PLT, yeah, see if it, okay, so now if I run this b.py, okay, so I don't have a in here, Now I'm running it and then I end up with FOO. Well, the problem here is that the FOO is not accessible. What we can do, we probably have to uh, go through those pathways. Um, fortunately that um, we have say WinSCP here. So you can extract the FOO SAP through Goliath. So I'm connecting to the Goliath. Um, and then I'll be able to find out. So I'm actually in, no, this is not really what where we are right now. So I need to find out the locations so that um, where is the address? So that's where the address is. But I'm not sure whether I can add to. Okay, let's just go all the way up. That's probably the only way to be able to root. Then we have home. Um, stuff. And my name. 
EQC. See it? Okay, so it's here. And then I have my trial somewhere, Jupiter. And I have to basically copy this to my desktop to be able to see the result. Yeah. So that's just the way how, you know, normally if you work remotely, how I can accept the result. But it's good enough because the full file is small. That's very small, right? It's only about 19 KB. And all the files, all the calculation files are actually in your server. Now, we have another way to do it better, which is that we use Jupyter. And it's an interface. And the interface will allow you to show the result next to it. So to be able to do that, um, we will need to establish that server. So I'll do a Tmax. And Tmax is to allow me to have two windows running at the same time. So that's the Tmax. And then uh, trial Jupyter again, Jupyter. And then I'll source that file to make the Python available. So I can do uh, Jupyter lab. Um, the, the other thing that I need to do is to specify the port that which we can access to. So let's say here I have example um, said that if I am going to change the port number, I will uh, use a um, criteria saying port is equal to, let's say 8888. That's basically the port that we are going to access to. So if you run this, okay, so it's Jupyter dash lab and port. You will be able to see something coming up. So clear here to go to Jupyter. And I probably can click and then OK. Oh, I don't, yeah, I just exit link. Now, uh, I just press the control C so that I can, um, I can see a token here. So you see that. The Jupyter server is now running at this IP address with a portal 8888. This address here means that it's running locally in Jupyter, not in my home machine. And this is the port that we're going to access to. And it has a token. The token is basically a access string that you need to go in there. Now, how can we use my own browser to be able to connect to that server? The key thing is that when we do, um, we can have another PuTTY, so new session. And then we have um, my name again, Goliath Labs, EITUQ.edu. The key thing here is that we need to do a port um, forward. So remember that is 8888. And the destination is 127.001. And 8888. So what does this mean is that when I connect to the um, Goliath, try to forward the 8888 from Goliath to my own machine. So that if I'm access here, I'm basically access the port 8888 at the remote drive, uh, at the remote machine. So it gave me access to be able to connect to the server, um, a specific port in the server. So I just uh, added in and I can go back to the login session and open it. And so this time it seems that you have a extra um, window, but this window has got a forwarding functions. So if I go to any of my browser, so I just say localhost, which is 127.0.0.1, and then port 8888, you will see something coming up, right? And this is actually to access 
the machine um, remotely. And remember, we have that file folder called b.py. We can open it even, right? So that's our b.py, right? So once we are using um, Jupyter, we tend to use a file with the extension name of uh, IPYMB. So it's called Jupyter Notebook. So you see the file differences, it's called IPYMB. So I can probably just copy the whole thing. I don't have to save the file. I just copy the whole thing, copy and paste, paste cells. Then I can just run it. I got the results straight away. I don't have to do all the copy and paste remotely and it's just showing up here. And you can see that speed is actually quite fast. So, um, and the other advantage for using a notebook is that um, you always save the figures within the Python file. So next time when you open up IPYMB, it's not only about the, the script, but also the result that uh, is generated from this. So now if I, if I save it, I save to IP, I save to a file called um, untitled, I close it. Next time when I open it, you will see even the script hasn't run yet. The result is already disappeared. So it gives you kind of expectation that what would be the result if you run this script. And again, if I go back to my, um, my server, trial um, Jupyter, you will be able to see it's here as well. So that just gives you an extra advantage to interactively working with a machine remotely. Um, one of the other things that I would like to uh, mention here is that actually Google has got a free um, Jupyter systems. Um, it's called um, GCE, GCE, Google server. It's actually free. 